Well, hi, food friends and good eaters worldwide. <laughs> I'm Ralph, in front of the camera this time. And I'm Kevin, and this time I've got myself behind the camera. Yes, he'll be our cameraman. And I say good eaters because that's something that uh, Kevin's mom used to say about me that she liked because... I you were a, a good, good eater. eater. Yes, you were. Anyone who enjoys Cavalcade of Food, our food channel, has got to be a good eater as well. So that's welcome. right. Uh, Kevin asked me to be in front of the camera this time because... I was going to make this dish. I wanted to give him a break from my face. <laughs> no, I was uh, planning to make this dish. I sometimes I get a little more um, artistic in quotation marks in the kitchen, and less scientific as Kevin is, or more uh, intuitive maybe that he is. But um, I wanted to make something with chorizo, which is a Mexican sausage, and I decided I'll just. Kevin said, "Why not just film it?" There it you is. know. So I hope this comes out. This is um, a bulk. Mexican sausage mm -hmm. called chorizo, so very different uh, from the Spanish. I love the color. Is it from paprika or something? What do they put in there? They, oh, it's almost orange. Yeah, there's uh, different spices, yeah, chilies, and um, you know, garlic and some um, hot things that would give it that color. Okay. Uh, this isn't real hot. You can get a different degrees of heat, but usually Mexican chorizo is not in a casing. It's usually bulk, and it becomes yeah. um, a good filler. You can mix it with different things. Chiliso and eggs is a good I, breakfast burrito. Yeah, I think um, the the one in the casing, I think of more of like the Spanish. Spanish right. Yes. So one of the things that um, you can use chiliso for, maybe we'll film in another episode, is to mix it with pinto beans and then create like a mixture of uh, chiliso and beans, which is good for a filling for enchiladas, good for a tortilla, good for a uh -huh. katana. We'll, we'll talk about that another day. Yeah, that would be fun to do sometime. But one thing, as I was saying, that uh, is pretty basic that you can do with chorizo is mix it with eggs. So we are going to create a casserole with chorizo, eggs, corn chips, and cheese. Okay. And we're going to start with a very typical kind of uh, sweating and sauteing of onions and garlic. Okay, looks like you got a couple of tablespoons of butter in there. Yeah, I think I waited too long because we never want our butter to burn, but I... Um, It'll be all right. Put yeah, your onions in there. One whole chopped onion. That's always good for a little crunch, a little extra flavor. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to... You can, you can use like a, a garlic that you've sliced, but we happen to have a little right. step saver here, which is a So little, that's pre-crushed garlic yeah, there. Like, almost like a garlic paste. Okay. So that's probably a clove of garlic. Um, crushed if you have a garlic yeah. press or just want to kind of mince it up very finely. Right. Okay. It, it smells really good. You know, you could use um, a little olive oil or vegetable oil. The chorizo itself does have a little bit of fat in it, mm -hmm. so it has some oils of its own. So I'm not, I'm trying not to get it too, um, you know, not trying not to use too much of another fat or oil or butter, but just enough to give the onions um, a chance to saute and sweat a bit. So okay, we'll, so we're we'll, not going to brown them. You're no. just going to kind of have them sweat out and get soft. Yeah, because there's going to be a bit of cooking going on with this chorizo too, where the onions can get soft that way too. But okay. Um, but we'll come back in just a minute after we're able to make sure that the onions and the garlic and the okay, we're back with um, Let's the see. onions. Like I said, they don't have to be completely sauteed or sweated, but just enough so that they're not raw. Mm -hmm. Now we're adding uh, gosh, what is this, about a pound? I think more? it looks more than that. I'd say that's probably close to two pounds. Yeah. If I had to guess. I don't know measurements so much. I mean, I, you know, from uh, maybe a pound and a half to two pounds. And it smells so good. There you should so look many, at the package from so the many, butcher. So many fun spices in chorizo that I don't even know, but they're, you know, Mexican or um, what you might think of as Spanish spices. Uh, cumin, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some chilies. Yeah. I think that's what gives it that color. You see how it's turning orange? Again? Yes, I see it. You can, um, let me see if the camera can pick up sort of, uh, look at the bottom of the, yeah. the pan here. So, yeah. So we're going to get more of that as this continues to cook because the oils and the, um, the fat from the meat will come out. It is beef. Did I mention that? It's a... Uh, uh, oh, it's not pork? It's beef. No, made it's, from beef. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe that's what it's usually made from. Oh, I thought it was made from pork. I, I, I kind of think it is made from pork, Ralph, but you know what? You're a Mexican chef, so I will defer to you. All I know is it tastes good, <coughs> but, um, so we're going to let this cook. It's going to take a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time to get that cooked. Okay. So, so, basically browning it. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, I'm going to add a, just a, a pinch of salt. Okay. Yeah, a little seasoning. It doesn't hurt, and a little pepper. 
but as I said, the chorizo is already pretty seasoned, and um, it has a great flavor of its own, so okay. you don't need to go crazy with the salt. But so what's this little guy so this here? This is um, a slow-roasted jalapeno pepper. I roasted it for some salsa that I made, and you can see the skin's almost black on parts, which yes. is fine. It's supposed to blister. This has been in the fridge, so it's gotten a little shrunk, shrunken up, but I decided we're going to spice up this dish this creative uh, whatever fun dish I'm now, making even more. I've always heard that the heat is really in the seeds and sort of the ribs on the inside of the jalapeno. Uh, of any pepper really. Yeah, of any is pepper. That, is yeah. that the case? Yeah so we're, we're gonna discard that because I know from experience that the skins uh, the skin and the, the ribs like you said are hot enough without needing the seeds because I don't we're gonna be taking this to a a gringo party, so we don't want to... <laughs> don't want to spice them out too bad. Yeah, we don't want people to... <clears throat> Although we like things with a little kick. We do, we do. And um, But you, sometimes you have to, if you... You know, <clears throat> it's like we talk about... If you're making it for yourself, make it to your own tastes. If you are yeah. making it for a group of people, then you kind of have to do it sort of... Lighter. More modicum, you know, because you're trying to sort of make it universally... Right. Uh, tolerant for people's and levels of spiciness. And the more s hot stuff you eat, the <clears> more <throat> you get into it, the more to you know you can tolerate it. And when I was little, I, I didn't like hot stuff at all. And my dad loved it, and he put it, you know, put hot sauce and jalapenos, just eat them raw, yeah. them and cook them, and put them in a tortilla, and things like that. And I asked my mom one time, I said, Mom, why, why is it that Daddy likes things so hot, but I, we don't. None of all the other kids seem to like it hot. She said, because we're mild Mexicans. <laughs> so I've always told people that. I'm a mild Mexican, but anyway, so this uh, can go okay. right into here. But I just want to make sure that the let's see how we're doing, doing here. Its thing. Yeah, you see how it's cooking up? Yes. Uh huh. Oh, it really smells good. Isn't that a great uh, <clears throat> aroma? Great. Yes, and from the smell of it, I'm quite certain this is a this is pork. Okay, I'm sorry. I like I said, I, maybe I'm the I've intuitive one. I'm not really the scientific but. one, but I do get um, the this taste of the all the different things going on in here. So I'm going to add the jalapeno and I guess I can just do it like this carefully and hopefully that won't be too hot for us. I friends. don't think so. Okay well we're gonna come back and take um, our back mm -hmm. to um, the mm. next step in this uh, kind of improvised fun casserole made with Spanish or actually Mexican cheese so okay. crushing some corn chips into I just take it right out of the bag. These are homemade from the local Mexican Oh, stores. yeah, those are so good. They're from the Me yeah the Mexican market in southwest Detroit. And that's a good place to get chorizo. And, um, yeah, it is generally pork, but it can be made with beef. I, I looked it up in our little break. And also, I have an uncle, uh, rest his soul, my dear uncle Jesse, who used to make chorizo from scratch, and he would use tequila because I forgot to mention that vinegar is also a main ingredient. Oh, because I think he in the put tequila in the chorizo. Yeah, so, huh? you can use different types of alcohol because uh, I think the original like sausages that they make in Europe, they use like a white wine or vinegar. Um, so you can do it in different ways, but I think he used, uh, I know he used a tequila to give it a special extra kind of flavor. Okay. So you can see so how we're kind of just mixing, mixing those up. in. Mm -hmm. And I would say maybe uh, three cups of, of crushed corn, corn yeah. chips. Well, maybe, right. maybe it depends on how much you're crushing them, too. Um, so that will give it a nice little extra crunch and actually a little salt, too, because it's... Yeah, and it will a little, you know, kind of that corn, corn flavor, flavor, right? Yeah. yeah. It's almost like a botanic casserole. Yeah, kind of. So when I originally made this for some friends, it, it just it was, was just the scramble or the eggs in there and the chips. And then I got the idea of making it a, as a casserole. So what we're going to do is add the... Uh, this mixture okay. into our so, so we've got a we got a kind of a nine by thirteen uh, casserole dish here that's yeah. been sprayed already. And so we don't need to spray it, but we are going to. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I sprayed it before we came back. Now need to just get a, a pot holder. Pot holder. In the other drawer. And um, Marianne, our sous chef, was asking, "How do you know when the chorizo is done?" And it is a little hard to tell. She said it reminded her of um, uh, sloppy, Joe. sloppy sloppy <laughs> joes. Yeah, because because it the redness it looks like and you the, know and the, uh, the smells and everything. Yeah, but, but with sloppy joes, you know, it's basically in a tomato sauce. So, but, but to answer that question, and for our friends out there watching and uh, learning, 
you have to let the chorizo cook for at least uh, 15 minutes to make sure that it's thoroughly cooked. But since this is also going into a casserole, you know, we're not going to need to worry too much about that. Yeah, if you need a spatula. I think this will do. Okay, so we're going to spread that kind of evenly yeah. around. So oh, next God, step, it smells great already. Yeah, we're going to um, add this concoction. I hope it works with uh, about eight eggs milk and cheese and okay then, and, and then bake it and so the oven is preheated to 350 degrees and so i guess we'll get the eggs and milk and cheese ready and right come back. on and back down to our next to last step okay of this hopefully creative chili so casserole cheese on eggs so we got eight eggs that we've cracked into this bowl and yeah we're going to add beat to them that good a cup of milk okay and even though we've seasoned the chorizo a bit, <laughs> even though we've okay. seasoned the chorizo a bit already, we are going Cry to over spilt milk. Okay. Yeah, put just a little bit of salt and another little bit of pepper, just because there's, you know, no no seasoning in chorizo and or in the, the eggs and the milk. Right. And okay, so eggs and milk. So that's that's almost a custard. Get that egg off of there. Just give it a good <laughs> shimmy shake there. I can't believe what a mess I have in the kitchen. I have made a mess. Kevin's giving me these looks. Oh, uh, that's all right. We can't cry we, with no, milk. we cannot. Okay, so, what all we're right. going to do next is just pour this on top, add okay. cheese, and put it right in the oven for maybe 35 minutes. Check it out after that. Okay. See? But, you know, this, when you put the liquid on top, so you just kind of... Yep. This part's almost like physics. It finds its, um, its it, own... It finds its way its own to all those little nooks and crannies. Yeah. So... Okay. Good. Now you've got... I don't know. Maybe... Um, mm, that's probably about... Uh, half. No, no. More than that. I'd say that's about two, two and a half cups. Okay, well, I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to use. I just put it in there. But... Like I said, this is the first time I'm making this like this. I'm kind of just improvising and getting creative as we go. But I have a feeling we'll be using the whole two cups. Just because why not? Cheese is good. Well, it will be nice too because it'll kind of make a top crust. Yeah. For this. Let me get in so you can kind of see. And then the oven. So the oven's preheated to 350. Do you think... Now, you know this kind of stuff better than I do. Do you think having too much cheese could keep it from baking? No, it won't, but I wouldn't. I mean, just put enough cheese to cover the top, and I think you're good there. Well, okay. yeah. Got it. It doesn't right. need to have an inch of cheese over the top. <laughs> All right, so the oven had been preheating to 350 50, degrees. yeah. Okay. And as I said, we're going to test it after about half an hour or so, 35 minutes, and give it the old toothpick test and see how it's coming along. Hopefully okay. Done so. Wonderful. Right, it's been 35 minutes, mm. and we're going to check on our chiriso egg casserole. I guess. Smells so good, Ralph. Oh, look how. Ow. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm just not. Uh, I'm not the cook uh, in, the, in the house here. Okay. But yeah. Oh my gosh. So it looks good, and it obviously look it's at it bubble. You can cool see it's down. still bubbling. On yeah. the sides, but and you know, oh. thirty-five minutes is certainly long enough for the eggs to cook and the cheese yes. are already pretty cooked and everything. So, oh, it's um, beautiful. Hopefully, it'll still have a bit of a crunch from the corn chips and the onions, and um, I think that giving it a little time to rest and cool yeah. off will be just right. And then we'll come back and give it a little taste. Oh test. my gosh, it looks great. Okay, we'll be back after it. Look, it's just kind of bubbling. Looks like yeah, a we'll let it set up for a few few minutes yeah. here, and then come on and then back. We'll take it. Beautiful taste. looking. It's cooled off a little bit, and I hope it's cooled off enough for me to give it a little, a little taste test. We are taking this to a party, so I don't want to. So don't take too big of oh, a chunk. Yeah. I can tell the eggs really. Look, bring the camera over here, here, Kevin. You can see how the eggs really helped hold see. it together. Oh see yeah. That? Uh huh. So it is almost like um. What did you call it? I forget. But anyway. Well, like a, it's like a Mexican frittata. Frittata. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's um. It's going to be called our chorizo and egg casserole. Yeah, it's beautiful. Careful. I mean, it still might be hot, but it's no. probably cooled off enough. I can't see. Is it steaming? Yes. Uh-huh. Mmm. Mmm. 
Wow. Is it good? It's yummy. I think I'm very happy with it, and I hope that... It looks yummy. Anyone watching has a chance to make this. I hope that they enjoy, enjoy it as much as we enjoy making it and putting it together for you. Very good. I have one more little quick taste, just to make sure. Just to be, yes. Mm. Yeah, the first bite, I didn't get so much of the cheese. I got more of the corn chip. And, you know, the jalapeno that we put in there is just giving it just a touch of heat, which is good. Good. This would be good with a dollop of sour cream. Oh, yeah. It would mm -hmm. be good. You know, we could have put little um, pinwheels of jalapeno on top. Yeah, would have looked so nice. Decorate uh -huh. it Definitely. Ways, but I'm quite pleased with this. This is um, an original creation a la Ralph. Very oh, good. Good. Chiriso egg casserole surprise. So once again, we enjoyed making this. We hope you enjoyed watching this together on Cavalcade of Food. And we'll see you next time, right, Kevin? That's right. Bye, everybody. Adios, y'all. <laughs>